What's up guys, Marco here and welcome to a new video. Today we are talking about how to craft the perfect Google Shopping ad. So how does it look like? What should you put in there? Just some general information on how you can make your Google Shopping ads really powerful, how you can maximize your click-through rate and get the most sales. So in this video, we are not talking about like bidding strategies and how to bid and how to structure campaigns, all that kind of stuff. We are really focusing on the actual ad only. And in order to do that, let's talk first about the goal of a shopping ad, right? It has three main goals, getting the right visitors to your site, getting as many visitors as possible, so having a high click-through rate, and getting as many impressions as possible, which you can achieve by having the right keywords in the ad. Now, in the ad, of course, that comes from the product. Now, all of these three goals individually are not very useful, right? Having a lot of visitors on your site without converting them is not useful. Having the right visitors, but only like one of them a day is not useful. And having many impressions without clicks is also not very useful. So make sure that all three goals are like, um, that you're working on all three goals when you're building your ad and when you are improve when you're improving it. So, Let's get started with, first of all, how the shopping ad typically looks like, right? And the different elements. So here we have a very typical dropshipping sort of um, shopping ad selling a very typical dropshipping product, which is this anti-theft backpack. And it consists of, first of all, an image, very clear, of course, a price, a title, um, shipping. Well, if you have shipping, whether it's free shipping or some shipping cost, and ultimately also, of course, a description that is um, yeah, giving the customer more information about the product and just talking a little bit more stuff about like the features, benefits, etc. So let's start with the image, right? And when it comes to the image, most of the time you're simply using the first image that you have also on your product listing on Shopify, for example, or whatever shop system you use. What you should do is testing white background images versus ambient images. So ambient images can be, for example, when we have this, um, this uh, anti-theft backpack here, someone using the backpack or the backpack being like uh, somewhere outside where it looks quite nice. The point is that we want to show the product in an actual environment. This is especially useful when it comes to like furniture or when we want to show a piece of clothing on a person, etc. We want to make sure that we are not showing the product only with nothing, but something where the customer can actually see what it looks like in a normal environment where the product is used, right? And what you should do is test images regularly when your CTR is low. So as a rule of thumb, I'm always aiming at a click rate of around 1% or more. Ideally, it's like 2% plus or something. But when it's like 0 0.3, 0 0.4, something in, along these lines, it is usually not that easy to scale your campaigns, right? Because you're not getting as much traffic as you could. And think about it, when you have a 0.3% conversion, 0.3% uh, click rate, for example, you get more than or less than a third of the clicks and the traffic and the volume and maybe also the sales that you're getting with a 1% click-through rate. So this should be very important. The image definitely has the biggest impact on your click-through rate. So make sure that you test it regularly. Then we have the title. And here we have a very fine line between readability and keyword density. So titles that are very short, very easy to read, like uh, you know anti-theft backpack gray or anti-theft backpack, are very, you know, people can read them very quickly, easily, which is good, but they don't have a lot of very important, powerful keywords, which is always something that you should take into consideration when using Google Shopping. So what you should do is put your most important keywords in the first 80 characters, because that's what people see when they are, for example, on um, the phone, because after that it will be trimmed. Uh, so make sure that your most important ones are at the very beginning, also the most important for the customer to actually see. And use the keyword planner if necessary to find good keywords. So when you want to find keywords that have good search volume, that have good like um, you know CPCs, etc., you can use the keyword planner. However, what you should keep in mind is that on shopping, this is not very accurate. So on search, you can say, for example, you want to go for keyword anti-theft backpack, and it shows, and Google Keyword Planner shows you you have to bid like one dollar twenty to get on the first page. On shopping, you cannot do that that accurate because obviously you are not bidding on specific keywords. You let Google do that for you. So the keyword planner is useful for shopping, but not as useful and as specific as on Google search. One example of a title that you could use for such a shopping ad is anti-theft backpack white with battery charger and USB 
waterproof, okay? So what do we have in the anti-weft backpack, uh, anti backpack? We have a color, white, to describe the product a little bit further. Battery charger, which is something that also many people might look for in a backpack, in an anti-weft backpack or something like that. USB and also waterproof. So now we have all these important keywords. They allow us to rank a little bit better, to get more impressions, to be more relevant for customers who are looking for these things. So when someone is looking for a bag that is waterproof or that has a battery charger, they will also be more likely to click on the ad. So in this case, we're not only putting in more keywords for Google to rank the ad, we're also putting them in for people that are interested in these features to you know, see it, to click it and eventually also buy it if you also like of course offer these things like i see people literally that put more keywords in there than you know what would be useful and they sometimes even come up with keywords that are not exactly um relevant for this product so they sometimes list for example features that the product doesn't really have which is totally stupid and uh then they maybe get a good click through rate but people of course don't buy if they thought they would get this very important feature so describe your product as good as possible Use keywords that are searched a lot, and then you will get good clicks and also relevant people to your page. Then we have the price. And here, of course, um, I cannot give you that many very useful tips without like looking at your store and looking at your business and, and your strategy. But try to, as a rule of thumb, especially as a dropshipper or a small e-commerce business owner, try to be in the middle range of your competitors. So when you look at your competitors that sell almost the exact or even the exact same product that you do, you should try to be somewhere in the middle range. Like when you're at the very low end, it will be very hard to be profitable when you know CPCs are high, etc. When you are at the very high end, chances are that you don't really get sales. So I always try to be somewhere in the middle. Um, I also did another video on like pricing for your Google Shopping ads, so you can check this out as well if you want. This is not the topic of this video, but this is very important. So just be somewhere in the middle and then you should be fine most of the time. If your ads don't produce results, try a lower price point. This is a very, very powerful technique that I'm using with my coaching students all the time. This is something that not too many people actually do. So I told them, like I have so many examples of people that I worked with directly one-on-one -on -one, and we literally added another four to five figures to their sales volume just by tweaking prices for products regularly. So if you are not able to get sales on a, at a $80 price point or very, very few sales, try a $70 price point, try a $69 price point and see, of course, only if your margins allow you to, if this increase in conversion rate justifies the loss in margin. So I would rather get a 3% conversion rate on a $70 item than like a 1% one on a $78 or $80 item. Of course, given the fact that you are still making profits on that lower price point. Test higher prices when you get sales. So when you make five sales a day, 10 sales a day, 20, whatever, the number doesn't matter here, but the point is you make consistent sales profitably, try to squeeze even more out of it by going with a slightly higher price. That's something that can be especially useful when you're like just slightly above your, um, slightly above your break even point and you say, you know, I need a little more profits to, to you know, reinvest more money back into it and etc. Then it can be useful to test, okay, I can charge 69, what if I charge like 74.95 or 79 even, right? Sometimes you might be really surprised how many more or how much more sales volume you get, uh, how much more profits you keep in the end because your conversion rate may stay the same. If it's a product where price flexibility is quite high, especially when you don't have like massive, massive, massive competition, then people might just pay 75 bucks just the way, uh, same way they would pay 69 bucks. So this is a very important tip. Test prices, both uh, higher prices and lower prices, depending on your situation. And you will see that just by doing this very simple thing, you can add more money to your bottom line. And then we have the description. And in the description, you should highlight features and benefits come second. Now, why is that the case? People are always talking about benefits, right? The point is when we are looking at Google Shopping, you have 10 competitors or five or whatever next to your ad. And they are all like trying to get the customer's attention and all at this point, the customer is like, comparing, right? The customer is comparing products, so you don't have to convince them to buy it, you just have to convince them that this is the right product for them. So talk about, for example, so first of all, don't use caps all over the place or promo related stuff like uh, free shipping, buy now, just three left in stock. 
This looks very bad on the on the search engine results page and many people still do that. So you can use it like once or twice. You can highlight an important word in like caps or something. But if you overuse that and especially if you use promo related stuff, this can be very harmful for your CTR and also for your overall performance. The good things to put in the descriptions uh, in the description are for example material, the size of a product if it's like fashion or if it's like you know a furniture item or something like that the use cases so what should you use it for what are for example with the anti back uh, theft backpack you can use it for your laptop when you go traveling when you go hiking or something like that general information like whatever makes sense in the context of your product and more things like if a product is waterproof if a product is you know has a certain quality standard or if you're using some specific special materials or something like that or a spe uh, special manufacturing process these are all things you can put in the description there is no real limit of what all the things that you can put in there as i said what is important here is that you keep things more feature oriented than benefit oriented so that people can actually compare your product against other products and define by themselves or find out by themselves if this is for them. If you just tell them, we are the best, this is the amazing product, you need it, your life will be better, they're like, yeah, blah, blah, that's just a typical marketing, blah, blah, I don't care about that. Um, they, at this stage, they want to really see the cold hard facts and then in your store, you can like mix these things and you can try to convince them to buy your product and why you are so great and you know, all the benefits they get from buying from you. If there are some, I hope there are. Um, and then use important keywords. So. The description, just as the title, even though the, 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 the keywords in the description are less important than in the title, it still signals um, Google that you know what your product is about. So if you sell this anti-theft backpack and you're not using the, the, the term anti-theft backpack anywhere in your description, then Google thinks that you're a little less relevant for that search query and they are most likely giving you less impressions. So when it comes to anti-theft backpack, repeat the main keywords in the description, add more keywords that you didn't put in the title because it would be too long. You can use like synonyms, you can use like related things, um, talk about backpack several, you know, repeat the word anti-theft backpack or backpack several times. Just add more important keywords to the description. Every relevant keyword will give you more impressions in the end so that you can, you know, rank more often, get more clicks and ultimately also make more sales. So find a good fine line between giving important information for the customer to click and giving important keywords to get more impressions. So yeah, these were my tips on creating the perfect Google Shopping ad, as I said, only about the ad, not talking about the, the strategy behind it or the bidding strategies, etc., etc. If you are still like feeling stuck, if you have watched a lot of videos, if you watch tutorials, if you learn things, but you still don't know, apply, uh, know, don't know how to apply to your business, like how to use all that info and peg it into a profitable campaign that fuels your e-commerce business, then... I recommend that you check out the link in the description or somewhere here in this info card where you get to my site where you can schedule a call with me or my team. But these days it's mostly me um, where you can then find out or we will find out if there is some way that we can work together completely one on one. So this means that I really work with you on your campaigns, on your business, on your store to get it to the next level. You will see that there are a ton of testimonials on this page. So read through it, find out whether it's for you and maybe we will. Yeah talk together on the phone very soon to find out if we should work together one-on-one -on, -one on your e-commerce business. So this being said, thanks a lot for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like below if you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments if what which of these things you are working on in your business. Like have you ever worked on improving your description? Are you testing your images? Let me know, it would be very interesting for me. And now I wish you all the best. I hope that you subscribe to this channel to see more e-commerce and Google Ads videos. And now I hope that I will see you soon in the next video. Bye-bye.